<laughs> Can't believe it works. Not this well at least. Today we're building a four-wheel drive car that can recharge from the sun. It's almost comfortable, got decent speed and surprisingly good torque. Let's build it. With the help, with some solar panels, we're building a solar car. Not only that, we're doing it with the help from e-bikes. Now what makes these e-bikes very, very special is the fact that they have two-wheel drive. There is a front motor and a rear motor, which means we have four. You probably see where this is going. These are 25 millimeter steel tubes and I'm welding them myself. Learned pretty quick that, yeah, the splatter eats through the carpet. First time ever picking up a welder, no formal training, just figuring it out as I go, I suppose. I'm cutting everything with an angle grinder, ended up using eight cutting discs for the entire project, not too bad. So far, I'm only doing tack welds. That gives me some flexibility if I need to adjust or redo something, which I probably will. Also, fun fact, metal gets really hot when you weld it. For the motor mounts, I went with 8mm flat bar steel, overkill, maybe, I, I don't know. But these motors aren't exactly toys and I'd rather overbuild something than have something snap mid-ride. So yeah, you can see right here, I had to chop, shift and weld in some extra sections. Not exactly elegant, I, I live by the measure once, weld twice. For the steering though, we'll use a U-shaped piece of metal and a cylinder on which the U-shape can pivot. It, it really easy, you see that later. Now, the front tires are a bit different. That's why I had to push in the frame like this so that the front tire and the rear tire would be in line because the U-shape will eat up a lot of width. So if it was a rectangle like it was before, the front tires would have been way out. So it would just not be in line with the rear tires and it would look real stupid. So I had to push it in. So the front wheels have motors too, which makes things a little more interesting. Ended up going with a pretty simple solution, two flat bar steel brackets and a 22 millimeter pipe acting as a pivot. The whole motor assembly swings on that pipe and surprisingly it all worked really well. The frame around the tire is the same 25 millimeter steel tubing. The flat bar steel holds the pipe in between and the 12 millimeter rod going through the entire assembly lets it pivot. Next up, we're going to have some braces to stiffen up the frame and also have something to screw the plywood flooring onto. Weight-wise, uh, she's heavy. It's surprisingly stiff. A super popular comment on any vehicle-related build video is Ackerman steering. No Ackerman steering, so the front tires are the same angle. If you're not familiar, don't worry, I wasn't either. Ackerman helps reduce tire scrubbing when turning. That's our control right there. Math tells me that this piece of foam is the perfect angle modifier so that the uh, Ackerman steering is optimal. Let's see if it works. Basically, it makes sure the inside wheel turns sharper than the outside one, so both follow a cleaner arc. Okay, immediately I can tell you it's a lot quieter. So what you do is hook up these fishing lines and anywhere on the fishing line, you can connect the steering attachment point. So what I'm gonna do is cut a piece of steel, weld it onto the frame of the tire, and then have a pivot point where we attach the steering to be on a point along the fishing line. And that's gonna take care of the Ackerman steering. Basically, when we make a right-hand turn, this tire will be angled more than the left tire. Sounds a little black magic to me, but if it works, it works. Once the steering pivots were in place, I could finally get started on the actual steering mechanism. The setup is pretty straightforward, a steel pipe acting as a steering shaft, a bearing at the end for smooth rotation and a support pillar in the middle to keep everything aligned and solid. We need some more reinforcement in this direction though, but it's, it's looking good. Now the reason the, the rod is uh, off-center is so that two people can actually sit inside. We'll reuse one of the handlebars from one of the e-bikes. It just makes sense because it has the throttle, the interface and all that all ready to go. We'll attach it onto the steering rod and that's gonna be it. I was just about to weld this part. I can't believe I almost did. It's made out of aluminum. It's a part from the e-bikes holding the handlebars. Now, wouldn't it be a lot less stupid to put screws inside of it so that you can adjust not only the height of the handlebar, but also the distance from the driver. Drilling through what I was told was steel, now in hindsight, could have been some type of titanium hardened diamond. Eventually I got it done. Yes.
It wasn't all sunshine though. The welder wouldn't weld, burnt my hand, so I kicked the welder to get it working again. Maybe I should have made this a little longer so that the steering rod is level with the linkage that's connected to the steering. Now it's kind of coming up at an angle. Let's just hook up the steering and see if it works, I guess. I got the steering connected, but I couldn't wait to try it. So I Frankenstein the electronics and got the rear tires running. <laughs> I are you doing a bromsar installerade? didn't stop me, of course, from going on a quick round trip with no way to stop. I then started working on the flooring, finished up the welding and uh, made mounts for the hydraulic brakes. All right, sick. We're really getting somewhere now, guys. Uh, I've welded this perpendicular piece just to reinforce it in that axis and that really helped. Now, something that happened during our first, first trip is that the hole that I drilled for the steering systematically got a little larger. So eventually the steering would rattle. So I decided to, to weld it and now it's, it's super solid. The steering is way better than I expected, honestly. Now I've fixed all the four braking calipers on all four wheels and I think that's gonna work. Now we do have a slight problem is I've salvaged all the parts from the old handlebar. This is all that is left. Now we have four braking levers. We're gonna have to figure out how to mount this so that I actually engage both levers. I could then prepare for the roof and welded a vertical post in each corner. Solar panel time. Option A. Option B would be something like this. Option C, extending the front. You see, in order to charge a 50 volt battery, you need a voltage greater than 50 volts coming from the solar panels for the MPPT to even be able to charge it. So now it's a question, do we want to keep the box in us? I think the solar panel should be here. Or do we make it easy for ourselves and just extend the roof? I'm not sure, it looks kind of stupid to be honest. Because the battery voltage is 48, the solar panels will have to generate a voltage preferably higher than 60 volts. And because the output voltage of one solar panel is only 25, we must use all three panels. This got me thinking of the Cybertruck and decided to go with an angled roof that perfectly fits the solar panels instead. At this point, we could take everything off to have it painted. With all the steel welded in, it turned out way lighter than I expected. So that was a nice surprise. I was bracing for something heavy and awkward, but it's actually pretty manageable. I'm using Hammerite steel paint and just providing it with a base coat before heading outside to spray with the main coat. For what felt like a dozen times, I could finally mount the tires and lock in the steering for the last time. I want to keep this as light as humanly possible, so I picked up these flexible solar panels. They're only two kilograms each. Two kilograms, insanely light. Now, they're only 100 watts, which means we're only getting 300 watts output. So the two kilowatt hour battery that I plan to use should be charged in about 10 hours. You know, it is what it is. The solar panel wires were too long, so I re-soldered the wires to make them shorter. Okay, I got the eight millimeter hobby plywood instead of the lead weight that is the 12 millimeter construction plywood. I put some work into making this as light as possible and I didn't want that work to be for nothing. So uh, I got seven panels. I thought we would make the sides, uh, the interior, have that all work and see if we have panels enough to also have the flooring, that would be the cherry on top. Let's make this an official lodbil. Still haven't learned that word. It's gonna look sick. All right, you guys, check this out. I have 13 panels painted and ready to go on the car. This is what it looks like without the panels. And this is with the panels on. I can't believe it, it looks sick. Okay, all there's left to do is some finishing touches with the paint, the accessories. Then it's all about the electronics to have this car going. But it's looking damn good right now.
can't wait, dude. But I realized I needed the doors, so I cut that panel and mounted the doors onto this 3D printed hinge. It's not the strongest hinge, but for this project it will do just fine. A nice add-on was to super glue a magnet onto the panel to kind of lock the door in place while driving. And that's it for the doors. I could now go over it one last time with the paint to cover up all the edges and salvage the final parts from our e-bikes, front and rear lights. I then mounted magnets and the 3D printed hinges on the rear panel acting as a trunk and a place to keep the electronics. Here are the four electronic speed controllers. The main motor cables were pretty short, so I figured the best way would be to route them under the car. I did the same thing for the screen cable, but hit a speed bump on the way. Stacking two braking levers on top of each other, I, of course it didn't work. I couldn't possibly grip my fingers around the two and actually brake comfortably. So what did I do? The front brakes are now going to be simple foot braking pedals. So we'll have four individual brake levers, a little unorthodox, but that's how we're gonna roll. Okay, check this out. Took a few hours to print out. It's made out of PLA, made in three parts. It's just one of the things I think is gonna make this car look just 25% faster. And actually really quite solid. I just heard a crack. <laughs> The two bikes in the beginning of this video. There's no way to mesh those two together. We now have a right side and left side system, They're completely separate from one another. So we have two interfaces, two screens, two systems to start up. That also means two charge ports that I added to the side if the sun isn't shining. The solar charger is this one from Victron I really like. It can do a maximum of 100 volts solar input and works on 12, 24 and 48 volt systems. Then the two batteries could go in and I secured them using metal band that's bolted onto the frame. I put the speed controllers on a heatsink so it's elevated off the floor. Because of the four speed controller setup, we can actually have rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, and of course the all wheel drive. And that's a nice feature. I'm not sure it's very useful though. And that's it for this build. Let's take it out for a drive. <laughs> Testing acceleration, four wheel drive, should be pretty good. Let's go. Leaving some tracks for sure, but I think the best acceleration is not instantaneous. It's a few meters ahead. So uh, let me actually go towards you guys. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get a wider shot for you guys. <laughs> Can't believe it works. Not this well at least. <laughs> okay, I'm on my way to the gnarliest hill around here. Anyways, it's not that bad. But now when I see it, holy shit, it's steep. Thought it would be interesting to see how this copes with it. Also, we don't have a reverse, so I kind of have to Fred Flintstone it. All right, there we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> there is no problem. Holy shit. Dude, I can even accelerate. Whoa! You see if I release the brakes? We go pretty hard back. All right, let's see if I can pull out. Oh, no way! Oh, no way! Holy shit! Oh yeah, let me get a side shot. That's hopefully a better perspective. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Look at that. I'm just gonna have to do that one more time. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Okay, last time, I promise. But you see how I can use the brakes and use throttle at the same time? Check this out. Yeah, you see? And then I just slowly release the brakes. 
e-bikes always have sensors so that you can't use the throttle and the brakes at the same time. Obviously, I disabled those. My old neighbor Christer, I just know he loved this. But who found Come on, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this thing seriously delivers. I was able to go 30 kilometers and the battery was still showing full. Realistically, I'd be happy if we could go 100 kilometers on a sunny day. Even before heading out, we had already generated a quarter of the entire battery, so the solar panels absolutely helps to increase that range. Full speed, I was able to hit 45 kilometers an hour, which isn't bad at all. At 48 volts, you're not gonna get much higher numbers than that. Where this thing really shines is just the raw power. Being able to just climb basically any hill and having four wheels spinning locked onto the ground really makes it quite unstoppable. Check this out, you guys. Eventually, something did break. I have to use an adapter that I 3D printed inside the steering and eventually the PLA gets eaten up and this is a perfect example of when I would use PCBWay. Mainly I've used their 3D printing and CNC service as you probably have seen in a lot of my videos. Stainless steel adapters, motor mounts, even propellers. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing it's in their name. And with their instant quote feature, you will get the pricing up front, which is really appreciated. So I will have PCBWay make a couple of stainless steel adapters and it will last a lifetime. Check them out in the description below to see what parts they can make you. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I see you in the next one. Bye.